Hey everyone, my name is Damien and welcome back for another episode as we continue rebuilding this R34 Skyline. So the car is actually rolling on its own wheels, which is amazing because the last time I've seen this was many, many, many months ago where we pulled the subframes out of the car to put it onto the rotisserie and ever since then the car's been onto rotisseries and dollies but never on its own wheels even though they were stolen off the Sylvia, but regardless, in this episode, we've got a little bit more work to do. We're gonna push the car over, over the lift, brush on the last layer of the underbody protection, press in some new bushings into the freshly powder coated subframes. So yeah, we've got a bit of work ahead, so we might as well get started. So before we get to the fun parts of putting freshly restored parts back onto the skyline, we've got to do the dirty jobs first which includes removing all the bushings, bearings and ball joints out of the suspension parts. Now I'm not going to show you on how I did this because my methods are, are quite sketchy to say the least and I'm sure there are videos out there explaining this better than I ever would. So we're just going to skip that topic in general but anyways, the point of this is all these parts are now free of any old bearings, bushings and ball joints and it's time to send them off to the powder coaters. So in my case, it wasn't even worth trying to sand these parts back and paint them myself. The powder coaters did an amazing job. So what they do is they sand blast all the parts back to bare metal, they zinc primer them and then they powder coat them in your desired colour. I chose satin black. So the next job on the list before pressing the new bushings in is to grab a Dremel with some 80 grit sandpaper and just clean up those surfaces anywhere where you are planning on installing a ball joint or bushing. So what this is going to do is ensure that there's no paint or powder coating build up in those sections because the bushings are really really tight fit as it is because they've got a metal casing. If you were using just polyurethane bushings with no metal casing around it they would slide right in. But because we're using factory bushings or if you're using solid bushings you probably want to clean up all these surfaces and even use a bit of grease before pressing it in. Alrighty, so now let's answer the question of what bushings were actually used on the underside of the car and why I chose Nismo over polyurethane or solid bushings. If you're just here for a bit of music and entertainment, pretty much maybe skip to minute, whatever it says on the screen. But if you want to geek out into restorations and talking about bushings, I guess we'll talk about it for a minute. So pretty much backstory is this car came out of the factory 20 years ago. And 
It's done about 120, 130,000 kilometers, I believe, and the suspension parts and bushings are obviously going to wear down over time and they need replacing. And the whole point of this build is for it to be a full restoration, um, but still be a street car. Now, I know that there are many definitions of what a true street car is, but in my opinion, as long as it's nice and comfortable, it's not whining, um, that for me ticks all the boxes. So, the Nismo bushings were the way to go. I've been in cars with polyurethane subframe bushings and solid subframe bushings, and I'll tell you right now that that is not for me. The diff or any road noise will come straight through the subframe and into the body of the car, and as loud, you can play your music as loud as you want, have the best sound system, but that whining noise is always going to be there, which for me is a big no-no. So yeah, Nismo is harder rubber, it's brand new than what was once in the car, so that's also a huge bonus. And to be honest, being a street car, you're never actually going to push it to the limits where you need polyurethane or you need solid bushings. So in my opinion, um, if you're building a car specific, uh, specifically for the street to enjoy it, um, probably stick to something on the lines of OEM bushings. So while Preston was using the Dremel to clean up all the suspension parts, I decided to jump onto another job, which is the boot, and just quickly brush on some gloss black enamel um, just to clean it up and finish it off. So by the time we were done with all the rear suspension, it was pretty much midnight and we, we decided to call it a day. So before putting the subframe and the fuel tank back into the car, the brake lines and the fuel lines have to be installed first and I absolutely hate the look of those plastic ones and they always crack so I decided to just put a rib nut into the body of the car and use some P-clamps to hold those lines in place. So remember the order that everything has to go back on. So the fuel and the brake lines go on first, then the fuel tank, then the heat shield, then finally the subframe can be bolted in place. I had to do this job two or three times in the Silvio because I kept stuffing up the order. So this time I made sure to get it first shot and yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. So again, I'm gonna spend the next minute or so geeking out into the suspension of the car. If you're here for entertainment, skip to minute, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about the rear subframe, the fuel lines, and the front suspension. So starting with the back of the car. The rear subframe, all the arms that are bolted to it. So we've got standard control arms with new bushings in it. We've got aftermarket camber arms, which are made by Cusco or Cusco, however you may call it. Um, they came on the car, they're in good condition, so I just ended up reusing them. And the car also came with Costco, um, what's this called? Um, 
hikers delete the four wheel um, steering thing but unfortunately I didn't really like the setup of this arm because it uses a ball joint that goes to the knuckle and Anthony from Dartan Racing actually recommended me a better alternative where instead of using the ball joint it just uses a normal knuckle bushing which is sweet it's probably a bit more safe as well so I just ended up buying that kit and then that tiny little arm, I don't know what it's called, but we just ended up using the factory one that was already in the car. If we ever need more adjustability, I'll just buy that third arm so it's also adjustable, but I don't think we're gonna need it. So I would have loved to put Driftworks or Hard Race or any other brand of arms under this car that's like hard and rubber and not the spherical bearing ones. But unfortunately with the time constraint, it just was not um, in budget. So we just used what we had and I'm sure it'll definitely do the job. Then we've got the fuel lines. The fuel lines actually already came on the car. This car was pushing, I think, 450, 500 horsepower on ethanol before. So I just ended up re reusing the lines. I just cleaned them out and put them back on the car. And lastly, the front suspension, as you can see, it's all kind of crusty. And that actually came off my friend Dan's car. Now, some of my parts didn't get powder coated in time and I'm missing a few bushings to get my parts put back onto the car and rolling. So I ended up pinching the whole front subframe assembly from his car and put it into my car. So that's probably why you're thinking, why is the front end old and the rest of the car is nice and fresh? So yeah. So we're almost at the end of another episode and as you can see the car is rolling on its own wheels. And for the people that have stuck around till the end, the car actually has its own engine. So I didn't really need to get this car rolling right now, I could have still done all the jobs I had planned on the lift, like putting the engine back in, starting the fabrication, no worries. But the reason why I got this car rolling sooner than later is because of the next episode. The next episode I need a few shots for with the gimbal and the camera and stuff, um, is going to be the biggest episode and the biggest video I've ever made and I can already feel myself having a meltdown editing the thing and I can already see my computer probably catching fire but you know what, it's going to be totally worth it it's going to be the biggest video I've ever made and I'm going to try and get it right so bear with me another one or two weeks worth of editing and then it's going live now before that video goes live I'm going to post a two minute video asking you guys for a favor then one or two days after that video goes live we're posting the biggest video I have ever made. Now, I'd like to give, uh, I'd like to say Happy New Year to everyone. It's the 31st of December right now. And I'd like to say thank you uh, to my friend Preston. I know we've had a fair few late nights here working on both cars, 
Um, so thank you for all your help. Thank you for everybody liking the videos, leaving some support, some feedback, and hopefully 2020 will be um, will be an exciting one. So catch you later.